This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and this is the Samsung Focus Windows Phone 7 smartphone on AT&T. This is one of three smartphones available at launch. Well, technically two. You can get the, the Focus by Samsung and the HTC Surround. The LG phone will be coming in a couple of days. This is basically a Samsung Galaxy S running Windows Phone 7 software. It's the same size as the Galaxy S phones. In fact, we'll compare it to the Vibrant here, which is the T-Mobile Galaxy S comparable to the Captivate for you AT&T folks, same size and this may look thicker because it's got squared off edges but they really stand at the same height. I do prefer these squared off edges because it's a lot easier to hold this phone because you actually have something to grip on instead of it coming to a, a fine point almost like the iPhone 3 GS did. Taking a look around, these are the volume controls right here up top, just like the Galaxy S phones, you have your micro USB port underneath a sliding cover. Not the most convenient location if you need to charge it while talking on the phone without a headset. 3.5 millimeter jack, stereo earbuds are included. It's your power wake button and this is the dedicated camera button. On the back, it's very attractive, also plasticky. Some people have complained about, but I don't mind. It's really, it looks like a quality piece and it looks quite nice, though it is plasticky. There's a subtle stripe pattern here. You've got your speaker grill, pretty good speaker on this, and the 5 megapixel autofocus camera with LED flash. Now the focus is a little bit different from other Windows phones in that you can actually expand storage. When you get the phone, it has 8 gigs of built-in memory and there's a micro SD card slot. So you pull off the phone back by yanking on it, snap on back, and here we've got the SIM card slot, the 1500 milliamp battery, and this is the micro SD card slot. There is no card pre-installed, and there are instructions on the back of the phone that say install your card first, and then the quick start will tell you how to do it, because you have to press the volume down, the camera button, and the power button to boot up the phone and format the card that you put in there. The drawback is, is that Windows 7 phones use internal memory and external memory, i.e. the SD card, even the ones where you don't have a removable SD card, it works about the same way. They use it as one formatted continuous device, even though they're not. So if you want to swap for a bigger SD card later, you've got to wipe out the device to do that. So we suggest that you pick a nice big card right away and stick it in there and get it over with. You can, of course, sync this with Zoom desktop software and back up your media and stuff first before you wipe out the phone if you do decide to use a bigger card. Let's take a look at this. This is standard for all Windows phones, but in case you haven't watched our 27 minutes worth of video coverage of the new operating system, this is your sleep screen right here. And I really like this. It tells you the time, the date, shows me my next appointment, and any waiting email messages, missed calls, what have you down here. Here you have your status for wireless coverage. This is the Wi-Fi symbol. We do have Wi-Fi on right now. and the battery charge level. This, by the way, has pretty good reception. Samsung phones on GSM carriers are not always the strongest, but this has quite good reception and really excellent call quality. So here we've got the live tiles. All, all Windows phones, again, have the same re resolution. They're 800 by 480. This is a 4-inch Super AMOLED display, and my God, it is vibrant and beautiful. Let's compare that to the HTC HD7 on T-Mobile. So this has the Super AMOLED display that's super duper vibrant and bright. It particularly looks good with the tiles there that Microsoft uses in their Metro UI on Windows Phone 7. Here we're comparing it to the HTC HD7 available on T-Mobile with a 4.3 inch traditional LCD, though not one of the best LCDs we've seen for color saturation. And as hopefully you can see here, the, the Samsung is way more vibrant. Also in comparison, the HT Surround, also available now on AT&T, has a 3.8 inch traditional LCD. The quality is quite good, but it's not as shockingly vibrant as this. And the Surround is the one that has the slide-out speaker bar on the side. Since these phones really are pretty set in terms of hardware specs, 1 GHz Snapdragon CPU, at least 8 gigs of storage, 5 megapixel camera, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and all that kind of thing, there's not a lot of variation, obviously, in specs. They're all going to have that, but what they can vary by is things like this one's strong point is being quite light and having a Super AMOLED display. The HD 7's thing is the giant 4.3-inch display. The surrounds is the side speaker bar. And the LG Quantum, obviously, is going to be the lateral slide-out keyboard.
So as you can see here, we have a bunch of live tiles, and some of them come with it. We've got the daily briefing here, which is Samsung's thing, and it's quite similar to the, the daily briefing that's available on Android phones if you've used those. You've got your weather here, news, and stocks. And of course, you can add whatever stocks you wish to track here, and you can add whatever cities you want to track, and you can have multiple cities. To get back home, you just press the Windows Home button. The other buttons are also fixed by Microsoft. So you get the back button, you've got a search button, and of course the side camera button. And these are capacitive buttons that work quite well. This is your dialer here. Again, there's not going to be any variation between phones, so we can take a look at that. So that's the phone dialer. As you can see, we start out going into call history, and then you tap a button to get into the phone dialer. The People Hub is standard on all Windows phones, and this is my list of contacts over here, and if there's a photo for the contact, it'll show up there, and you've got the alphabet breaking up your selections. You can also search for a contact. It works quite well. And then you can tap on the contact to view the contact. This, by the way, is syncing with Google for email, calendar, and contacts. You can sync, of course, to MS Exchange server as well, and to Windows Live, your Hotmail, all that kind of thing. And you can, you can sync to multiple sources at the same time, which is pretty darn cool. Messaging, again, is a standard threaded messaging application that's particularly attractive looking once you have several messages going. Email client is really excellent looking. And we'll just take a look at the Hotmail. Pick one out. Very attractive HTML email with pinch zooming. Even in the email client, this has got to be the best looking email client I've seen. Very fast, as are all Windows phones. We've got Microsoft's YouTube player we've downloaded here, I'll show you that in a minute, that plays high quality over Wi-Fi and low quality over 3G, unfortunately. Here in Explorer we'll take a look at, and this is the calendars widget that's also standard. It shows your next appointment here. It does not show a list of appointments, unfortunately. You tap on it, it takes you to that appointment. Attractive calendar. And there's your month view with kind of nearly Greek text over there. You really can't read it, but you can tap on any day to get to your appointments. And you can color code your calendars and sync to multiple calendars as well. We've got our Xbox Live and Games. We'll show you that in a minute too. And the Marketplace is the same on all these. There's a two here because I have two apps that could be updated if I want to do that. And the Zune Music and Video Player, which we'll take a look at right now. Now I have synced this with Zune on the desktop. So we have a lot of content on here. You can see you start out being able to choose music, videos, podcasts, radio, because this has an FM radio. And visit the Marketplace. It remembers the last albums that I've played. New stuff I've added. And there's a shortcut to AT&T Radio, which is a pay-for service that gives you access to last FM and some other things. And I'm really not sure why you would pay for it, because some of these services actually are available for free. And we do have a shortcut to the YouTube player since we've installed it. We'll go back to something that I was playing. Kind of a quiet piece. We can hear the quality of the speaker. It's quite good. And we get the full album art here. Now I got this by syncing to my, my Zune on my uh, Windows PC, but I've also used this with my Mac. And if you use it with Mac, you can download the Windows Phone Sync software, and you can actually sync this with iTunes and get your playlists and anything that you want off there that isn't DRM protected. Likewise, you can get videos that you have in iTunes, as long as they're not DRM protected. It's a really nice music experience overall. Here we have AT&T Navigator, which is Telenav. Of course, there's Bing on here with its excellent POIs and mapping, and it's not so excellent web search. There's your AT&T Navigator standard interface. And we can take a look at maps and traffic. Now, Samsung got in a little trouble with the Galaxy S phones with problems with the GPS, and so far I can say that this one works quite well. It also uses a different chipset entirely.
more applications. These are things that came with the phone that I've also installed, like the Adobe Reader, Netflix, and all that. But this is where your additional applications are. And any of these that you want to have as a live tile, instead you just tap and hold on them and you can pin them as a tile. Of course, there's the Office Mobile Suite here, and that syncs with SkyDrive. It does not sync with your desktop, unfortunately. There's no way to copy documents. This does not act like a mass storage device, so you can't put Office documents. You can sync to the desktop for your multimedia stuff, for your videos and your music with iTunes and with Zoom. Take a quick look at the YouTube player on this. This is playing mobile YouTube videos. There is no flash support yet in Windows Phone 7. Oh, that looks very good. Especially stretched to four inches, it still looks good. Again, this is over Wi-Fi right now. And now we're playing the same video over 3G, so you can see the quality difference. It's pretty abysmal over 3G. I'm not sure why Microsoft set the YouTube player to use such a low-quality version over 3G, but they did. Hopefully somebody else is going to come up with a better YouTube player. It does support embedded videos in a web page, so it will you can tap on it and you can then play it in the YouTube player as well. Now we're going to take a look at Xbox Live Gaming. We've downloaded a couple of trial games. Your recent undercover operation posing as a wheel man to bus car thieves has been exceptional. These local police things can take months, if not years, to execute. I don't have that kind of time. We only have a couple of weeks. The FBI is stepping in. I'll be here. So that's Need for Speed Undercover. It's looking pretty darn good, and the controls work quite well, too. Definitely the, the Xbox integration on Windows phones is going to give the iPhone a run for its money. And most games sell from between $299 to $699 at the most. A lot of them are $299 to $499. So here's the camera interface, and it, it's a, this is a very fast focus compared to the HTC phones. Take a picture, pretty much just like that. And you can see here the little gray bar area. While you're live in the viewfinder, you can just swipe this way to see the last pictures that you've taken. So here you can swipe through pictures, just like that. And then go back to the camera. Aim at the cat again. You can see the settings here. Autofocus mode, white balance, image effect, contrast, EV. And this is quite a good camera. It's about comparable to the Samsung Galaxy S phones, and this happily does have a flash, which you can obviously control right here. Screensaver here, I'm pressing that. And it'll go into the camera without unlocking the phone. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the web browser, which is Internet Explorer Mobile. Basically, it's version 7 and it has support for multiple windows. We can just tap there and we'll go back to this one, which is Microsoft's own site for Windows Phone. Exceptionally fast, well behaved browser. Really have no complaints there, though the load times are not quite as fast as the iPhones. You do not get a URL bar or any controls when the phone is in landscape mode. You have to put it back to portrait mode. That's a little bit goofy. So now you can see we have our URL bar and our controls here. You can add a favorite, go to favorites, and here are your other functions. And you can pin any web page you want to your start page. So here we'll load our own page, and you can see the on-screen keyboard, which is very good. Here it is loading our own page over 3G HSDPA. This is HSDPA 7.2. That's the highest that Windows Phone 7 currently supports. And there's our page complete with ads.
looking good. So that's the Samsung Focus available now on AT&T. We're doing this on launch day. This is November 8th and supplies appear to be very constrained with stores having maybe only five of these at a time. Hopefully they'll be more widely available in the coming days. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review.